last email of the day uh this email comes to us from matthew uh from leeds in the uk a uh, longtime viewer of the show matthew says daisy ridley confirms ray was almost a kenobi what do you think mate would this have improved the sequel trilogy okay so let's back up for a second for those of you who may not have heard um Daisy Ridley, well, where's my, uh, where's my card? There we go. Daisy Ridley was being interviewed on Jimmy Kimmel Live. I, we were just talking about Josh Gad. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel was off on vacation for, for the week, so every day of the week he gets a different guest host. Josh Gad was his guest host. And he and Daisy Ridley have a very close personal relationship. They're, they're very good friends off, off camera. And he starts asking her about some of her behind the scenes things of, uh, of uh, Ray's character. Um, Nick, had you heard about this? Did, did you see the interview? Is this no, this is news to me. I didn't know about this. Okay. Yeah. So she was interviewed on uh, Jimmy Kimmel Live uh, by Josh Gad. And she starts, you know, kind of spilling the beans about the fact that J.J. Abrams had other plans for her that weren't a Palpatine. Uh, so let's go over this particular article is from the Hollywood Reporter. But again, it's you know it's on any any website. Um, she uh, oh, hold on a second. She goes through and says um, uh, at the beginning there was toying with an Obi Wan connection. There were different versions. Uh, then it really went to, yeah, there was no one. And then it came to episode nine and JJ Abrams pitched me the film. And I was like, oh yeah, Palpatine is granddaddy. Then two weeks later, he was like, mm, we're not so sure. So it kept changing. Uh, so then even as we were filming, I wasn't sure what the answer was going to be. And then she goes on and, you know, says other things of that nature. But um, yeah, there are. Ray's lineage uh, kept changing from a from film to film and also from moment to moment. It appears that, you know, the filmmakers themselves didn't exactly know what they wanted for her character, which this is not in line with all the stuff that J.J. Abrams has been telling us over the years. Uh, Force, I remember Force Awakens came out and we were all blown away. And J.J. Um, Abrams was very adamant in saying it's important to me that Rey is a nobody that she doesn't come from any of the previous Star Wars canon people whatever uh but we didn't that was not huge public knowledge and then we saw The Last Jedi and we come to find out oh Ryan Johnson delivered on J.J. Abrams promise that, that she's a nobody but we the audience didn't know that so we all blamed director Ryan Johnson for making Ray a nobody. We thought that she was going to be important, but no, in his uh, subversive fashion, uh, you build it up to say, no, you're a nobody. And then we come to find out in Rise of Skywalker that Ray actually turns out that she's the granddaughter of Emperor Palpatine. Yeah. And she didn't even know that. She thought that she was going to be a Kenobi. And then she thought, okay, well, maybe I am a nobody. And then, oh, maybe I'm going to be a Kenobi again. Oh, nobody. And now, as it turns out, I'm a Palpatine, but maybe not. But maybe I am. She was so confused uh, as to who, who her character was. Um, Nick, as an actor, would, would a situation like this be frustrating for you? How would you deal with something like this? If you don't even know your own backstory, how would you play that? And what are your general thoughts that the filmmakers had in mind? Um, I could see how that's very frustrating. But I mean, I think when you're dealing with a movie like this, I mean, I would deal with the frustration if I was in a lead in a Star Wars movie. But um, I, I think I think a lot of it, too, though, is that her character doesn't know her lineage. So, I, you know, I think that's why she was still able to push through and create this great character, because, you know, it is a mystery to everyone, including herself. So not having an idea until it's revealed was very could be very interesting as an acting standpoint. Now, just as the theater goer and watching the movie, I thought all of it was very poorly handled. Um, I think it was. I think I was. I was totally fine with her being a nobody. That's 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 fine. It's just a new person, and it just shows you that like it it opens up that idea of you don't have to be part of this thing or that thing. Like you can just be a a, a person who comes up and becomes special. Like I thought it was great, and I you know that J.J. Abrams was like that's what he wanted, and Ryan Johnson. You know, I I thought he did a great job with Jedi. I think. The Palpatine thing seemed like J.J. Abrams trying to like kind of retcon, like fix everything because all the like yeah. all the fanboys were angry, unhappy with the way that they handled 
Rise of Skywalker. And, you know, be 100% honest, I remember when I watched it the first night, because I watched it a couple times in theater, I was at a packed movie theater filled to the brim with everybody. It was like the first night it was open. I was super excited to watch it. And I just, you know, there was parts of it where I just kept going like, really? Yeah. And I remember that when they had the Palpatine reveal, the audience gasped and I cackled. I just cackled. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, this is such a, this is such a, are you happy now, fanboys? Like, she's somebody. That's cool, right? And I was like, you should just, just let her be nobody. Just, it would have been so much more interesting to be like, you come out. And the Palpatine thing seems so like crammed in there, and then the Snokes are there, and Palpatine's behind the whole whole thing, and there's this and that, and I, I thought it was very poorly handled. I think it was extremely poorly handled, and I, for me, it all comes down to obviously it's the filmmakers. Obviously, it's the filmmakers, and ultimately, if I have to put blame on any one person, I would put it on Kathleen Kennedy. Um, Kathleen Kennedy, as the head of Lucasfilm. Uh, she was she was made head of Lucasfilm by George Lucas himself, and while mm, it's it's easy to put blame on somebody, but let's let's take a look at Kathleen Kennedy's filmography, shall we? She is one of the most talented producers in Hollywood history. She um, was casting director and one of the executive producers on not every single Spielberg film, but a great deal of yeah. them a great deal she uh, same thing casting director and executive producer on a lot of the george lucas films and in pretty much all the star wars movies um she's had her fingers in hollywood for decades not just her fingers she's been active in it for decades she has won awards she has won academy awards she is she knows what she's doing and she knows how to do it well the one thing kathleen kennedy does not know how to do is run a studio. She knows how to run a movie. I don't think that she knows how to run a studio. And here's why. Even though the films, uh, the Lucasfilm, uh, the Disney era uh, Star Wars movies have... How did I start the sentence? I totally derailed myself. Um, the Disney era Star Wars films have been extremely successful box office wise. Mm -hmm. If they haven't made a billion dollars, they've come pretty darn close to making a billion dollars. And that is to Kathleen Kennedy's credit. Mm -hmm. The problem is that there's no consistency amongst any of the films. Force Awakens had a great premise. I love, like, it is one of my favorite Star Wars films of all time. I thought it was fantastic. Um, but it didn't have a clear vision. Why didn't it have a clear vision? Well, let's look at Last Jedi. Let's look at uh, Rise of Skywalker. None of those films have any consistency between the three of them. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean that you need to have the same director or the same writer on, on all of them. You don't. You can have different writers. You can have different directors. But there was no clear vision. They mm -hmm. didn't know who Rey was when they started. And they certainly didn't know who she was when they ended. It was, it was a make them up as we go. Um... You look at Princess Leia. Look at her storyline. I mean, that could have been... It, it could have been handled worse. It could have been handled worse. It wasn't handled great. Um, they... Uh, of course, nobody plans on their actor dying in the middle of production. Nobody plans on this. Uh, but there are steps that you can take to say, all right, this is how we're going to handle the situation. Um, even, even if you didn't plan on your character... Uh, or sorry, even if you didn't plan on your actor dying in the middle of production, the fact that you're going to pull a Wonder Woman, or I'm sorry, uh, a Superman, as she gets blown out into space, her eyes open, she uses the force to, to come back to the ship. That just seemed that just seemed like a bad idea. Um, there was a lot of inconsistency amongst these movies, and not just the main three Star Wars. Uh, same thing with uh, Solo. Like that was a hot, heaping pile of garbage. Uh, not that it was a bad movie, but the production behind it. You hire yeah. Lord and Miller, which I personally would have loved to have seen the Lord and Miller version. I, of. I wish they would have just let them finish it out. I oh, think it would have been a great movie. I think it would have been a great movie. So interesting. Like, yeah. you know the style of filmmaking that, uh, again, you. I, I think on, on the show a few weeks ago, I uh, compared it to you order orange chicken. And then you taste the orange chicken, and then you send it back and say, no, I want General Sal's. Like, you knew what you were ordering when you ordered yeah. it. You've had it before. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I don't know. Like, Kathleen Kennedy is not a good studio head for me. Nick, do you have different thoughts or opinions on this subject? 
No, I, I agree with that. I think it was all a bunch of bumbling around because they were trying to make it something new and different and its own thing. But as much as they were trying to make this new world, this new Star Wars story, like its own thing, they wouldn't let it. Every time it started to become its own thing, they were like, no, 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 we have to go back. I mean, that's what happened with Solo. Like, you know, Miller and Lord were like, we're, we want it to be fun. We want it to be like a heist. We want it to be like young Han Solo. And then, you know, she, Kathleen Kennedy came in and Lawrence Kasdan, which is a great writer, was like, that's not my script because they were having them improvise. It was like, mm-hmm. let this be something fun. Let it be something else. And instead, they canned them and then they brought in Ron Howard, who's a great director, but it's still just like, it didn't match up. And I don't hate Solo because I was like, ah, oh, the potential and there's such great moments in it. And I would have loved to have seen this, but I really wish they would have just let them finish it out. And I think with, you know, you see that, like, I don't know if you've read uh, Colin Trevo's script, who he was supposed to do the third I one. I cliff notes of it, but I never read it. Yeah. It's, it's, I've done a reading of it. It's great. It's not perfect, sure. but it's like, oh, it would have, after follow up to The Last Jedi would have been incredible. And like, I know that there was some falling out with him, which everybody trashed and was like, this is a weird film and all of a sudden he wasn't working on it and i know star like they're very like you're a director you're poised to do this up and you're basically like gone yeah i i don't understand what the full aspect of it was because like the script is like actually really good and really interesting and kept ray and nobody in kylo ren was still like the problem but there was all these like really cool characters they had and you know they didn't sideline rose they they you know everybody had a a, a great moment yeah. And I feel like they got nervous and they kept trying to be like, well, how do we, they kept trying to capture the original Star Wars and like the prequels, you know, it was like, that was done by George Lucas, but like yeah. the original, the original Star Wars was like all a fluke. Like George Lucas didn't think it was going to be anything. He made that, you know, bet with St- uh, Steven Spielberg about, and like, that's how he gets so much money off of it. Right. Cause he thought it was going to be a joke. He thought it was going to be like, silly thing, but like a lot of it too, like the first movie was so good and new hope was cause like, George Lucas's ex-wife like helped him edit so much of it. it makes sense. Well, then this- not only that, but he had to prove himself as a filmmaker. He he'd only done THX uh, yeah. three thousand or whatever. That, that was a horrible movie. He, he didn't even direct. He didn't direct the. He didn't direct uh, Empire and Jedi. Correct. I, he just directed a New Hope. He sort only of. directed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he only directed New Hope. But he he still, as a filmmaker, had something to prove. He yeah. still had to go out and say like, this needs to be great. Same thing with Spielberg. John he needed to prove himself he only had yeah. duel uh the film duel out before that and nobody had ever heard of it um that's why so many of these filmmakers have great films early on in their career but then you know later on they're nah, yeah. they're okay um they had to prove themselves and with an established franchise um jj abrams did not have to prove himself he was already an established director same thing with ryan johnson and same thing with uh jj abrams See what yeah. they did there. Um, anyway, uh, I, I want to go back to Matthew's uh, question for a second um, and just address something. He says, "Do you think that had Ray been a Kenobi, that this would have improved the sequel trilogy?" My short answer to that is no. Yeah, because because uh, everything that we've addressed before, there was no consistency. There was no plan. They didn't have an, this entire plan later like love or hate the jurassic world movies by colin trevorrow there is a plan he is building something he's building towards a certain thing and this has always been his plan now i hated fallen kingdom i thought that was a terrible it's easily the worst film in the entire jurassic uh series jurassic park three i'd say that was was pretty rough but i agree fallen kingdom wasn't that great Um, But, you know, like I said, love it or hate it, there is a plan. Everything is coherent in his universe. There was nothing coherent about these three Star Wars films. Uh, So that's why I'm going to say, no, making her a Kenobi would not have improved the story. Yeah, I I agree with you. I think if they would have gone in being like, she's a Kenobi, we know she's a Kenobi. Here's how we're going to set things up. We're going to have, I mean, I remember in um, Force Awakens, they have that amazing moment where she like reaches for the lightsaber and you hear all the different voices. You even, they even imagined to get Alec Guinness's voice because they got afraid and I took the right part. I loved and, that scene. Yeah, that was so amazing. And I was like, yeah, how cool would it have been if it was a Kenobi? But then they were like, she's not a Kenobi. Get that out of your head. That's fine. I'm fine with that. Then I think Mayhair Kenobi, it would have, it would have only improved it if that was their plan. Like you said, there wasn't a plan. If they knew she's going to be a Kenobi, this is the big reveal. Here's the thing we show. Here's the flashback. Here's the yeah. cool thing we have with you and McGregor. Like blah blah blah. 
then that would have been rich and fulfilling. But just to just be like, just kidding, you're a Kenobi, that's not going to fix anything. Nope. Definitely not. Anyway, guys, a huge question is, what do you think? Do you actually have a differing opinion? Do you think that the movie could have benefited from Ray being a Kenobi as opposed to a, uh, uh, a not a, a Snope? Oh, wow, shoot, what's his name? Palpatine, thank you. Uh, would it have uh, benefited from her being a Kenobi? Instead, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. All right, guys. Uh